Yo, so what's going on guys? It's your boy Laser Gaming. Welcome back to another GTA 5 video. So as I'm sure you guys are aware, a few days ago Rockstar Games released the epic gun running DLC update, which included a ton of content including vehicles, property, new clothing. However, one thing that they've added is a new way to make money in GTA 5 Online. Now it seems like every big update that comes out of GTA 5 Online does include a new way to make money, including the import export update, the bikers update, and the vehicle warehouse update. Now every time Rockstar Games released least one of these big updates i've always put together an ultimate money making guide fully breaking down how is the best way to make money grinding out with these new businesses whether that be by saving you guys time helping you make extra money or just giving you guys a bunch of tips and tricks that'll help you guys out in the long run so that is what i'm going to be doing in today's video it's fully breaking down how you guys can make the most amount of money out of these new bunker businesses and exactly how long it will take i've seen tons of people rushing this information out to you guys making these videos in the first day of the dlc being released released which i can tell you now straight up are all 100 bullshit as it just isn't physically possible to do it but like i said i've been grinding this out fully for the last three days straight trying to put this video together for you guys so all i ask is you return the favor by dropping a thumbs up down below and if you guys are new around here feel free to subscribe as i do post daily gta 5 videos without further ado let's get into the guide Okay, so going off feedback from previous DLC money guides, you guys seem to really appreciate when I cover every single thing as if I just came online for the first time. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video is fully taking you guys through the whole process of me buying my bunker and then finally making the end sale. And like I said, throughout the entire video, just giving you guys a bunch of tips and tricks that will help you guys in the long run. I will say right now, one of the biggest tips I'm going to give you guys in this video is how you guys can actually save your product from the final sale. As I'm sure you guys are aware, you have to do all of this work in public sessions now so there's a good chance that someone can come over to you in a hydro or a jet or a tank and just blow up your product and you just lost all your money don't worry guys i'm going to be showing you guys in this video how you guys can save it so you lose nothing so first things first you guys will need to own one of these bunkers you do purchase them off the maze bank for closure website so the same website that you purchase the biker clubhouse is from now it is worth mentioning all of these businesses will earn you guys exactly the same money and none of them come with any extra abilities so if you guys are just looking to make it the most amount of money in the shortest period of time then definitely just go ahead and buy the cheapest bunker so the only benefit you guys are going to get from purchasing a different bunker is the location of the bunker now it is worth mentioning three of the most expensive bunkers are next to trevor's runway so like i said i did buy one of these ones this is because it's next to a runway you guys can just land planes helis jets whatever when you're doing the supply missions it makes it a lot more easier but like i said if you guys can save a cool million dollars for like a 45 second drive from paleo bay then you're probably better off taking that option especially if you guys haven't got the money lying around now from here you can see me customizing the bunker all of these are just extras they're not really going to help your business in any way shape or form i will say the shooting range if you complete some challenges you can get free explosive and free rpg ammo which could save you guys a bunch of money in the long run but once again isn't really even necessary now once you guys have successfully purchased your bunker you will get greeted for cutscene by agent 14 who's just going to give you guys like a little walkthrough of the actual bunker itself so i'll quickly play this out for you guys just so things make more sense later on in the video when I'm trying to explain stuff. Hey! Hey, you must be, uh, well, I know who you are. And anyway, I'm me, and you're you, and that's that. Money. We're selling this silly old place. Not that it's ever been used for anything inappropriate. Uh, of course it wasn't. Just routine business that needs a bunker. You know how it is, don't you? Anyway, uh, we're just moving to somewhere else, uh, equally routine. You know, hey, hey, hurry the fuck up! We have to leave! Come on, destroy anything you can't carry! Oh, anyway, if I were you, I'd make it a nice boutique hotel or some such. It'd be great as that. Like a microbrewery or record decks, hog roast. It's perfect. Yeah. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, yes, we're almost done. No. No, we've destroyed everything. More or less. Up, 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 up. What are you talking about? Do it, but don't do it. What are you, a fucking fortune cookie? I will call you back. So, listen. I've, uh... How would you like to make some money? Good money, you know? There's no money in hog roast. <laughs> but there is in this work. Hey! Stop destroying things! Some of you are staying. Let's go for a little ride, shall we? It's really lovely to meet you. 
As you can see, we got ample room for parking. Here's a space for a mobile operations center, if you want to buy one on Warstock. Got it? Anyway, we're on a strict schedule. And this is your shooting range for target practice, team bonding. I can't hear myself think. Hey! Hey! Hey, leave the range up when you're done. They're keeping the equipment. You get the point. Ah, missed our exit. Just give me a sec. Should have just reversed. Not gonna miss these corridors. Okay, here we go. Here we are, the heart of the place. Research and manufacturing. You wanna make real money? Dirty little secret for you. It's in arms. Log into the network, request a resupply, and bring the hardware back here. The eggheads will take it apart. Cook up new, exciting ways of terminating people. Or just get them to copy existing designs. Then, you sell your weaponry to state-sanctioned actors on the global stage, make a tidy profit, and do the country proud. I got medals for this, I promise you. Come look at this. Hustle, people! We need this out of here five minutes ago. You run a good operation, you fill the whole place up. Enough arms to affect regime change in two-thirds of the world's democracies, according to the stats. How does that sound? Fantastic is how it sounds. Ugh, Jesus. We gotta get out of here. We're bombing someone tomorrow. I mean... I don't know what I mean. Doesn't matter. It's been wonderful. Remember, we never met, you never saw me. I don't know you, and anything you think I said, I didn't say, and you were delusional. Remember that. I'll be in touch. You're a hero! Okay, so as you guys just heard, unlike the previous businesses where it's all about money, whether this be the vehicle warehouse, the crate warehouse, or the biker businesses, now we can use these businesses to unlock some new items from the actual DLC itself. So as I'm sure you guys have seen in the trailer and for the last few weeks, Rockstar Games have introduced a bunch of new stuff including camos, liveries, attachments, weapons for your vehicle, and all of these things are known as upgrades and there is a total of 45 altogether. Now we'll be talking more about these upgrades later on in the video and how you guys can actually hand pick what upgrade you want which can end up saving you guys absolutely hours hours, days, probably even weeks. I know a lot of people think these upgrades are random what I've given to you and from the surface it will look like that. However, using a little trick that I'm going to show you guys in this video, you'll be able to choose any of these upgrades. So like I said, that is the first option you guys will have from this new bunker and of course the second option now is to make money. So as you guys can see in the bottom right of the gameplay right now, with all of the other businesses, there's usually only two bars that will say supplies and stock. Whereas we've got three bars now. So the stock is the money, aka the guns that we're going to be selling. The research is how we're going to unlock our upgrades. And finally, our supplies are what we're going to go and steal. Now we do have two options to refill supplies. We can either pay for these or we can steal them. Just like the previous businesses. It's kind of good that they kept it kind of similar to previous businesses. It saves me having to explain things in much more detail. But before we go ahead and do that and resupply our business, we actually got to go ahead and set our business up. So go ahead and simply click set business up. And what this will actually do is give you guys a little introductory mission similar to how all the supply runs work. This one is going to be surprisingly easier than the majority of the supply missions. So I'm not going to bother showing you guys this as it's very, very straightforward. All you guys got to go and do is pick up a truck and bring it back to your business. Now, once you guys deliver the truck, it is going to give you guys a little breakdown of each section of your bunker. So I'll quickly play this for you guys.
Okay, now once you guys have set up your business, you'll now be able to access the laptop inside of your bunker where you can find all of the following options. Now straight away, there's no point of us doing a resupply run because we've just done this setup mission, which is actually going to fill our supply bars all the way up to the top. So forget about doing resupplies at the moment. I'll talk more about that in a second in the video. However, the second bar down is the research tab. Now here is where you guys can unlock, like I said, new attachments for your guns, new weapons for your vehicles. However, as you guys can see here, there is a bunch of stuff to choose from and the one they actually give you to start off with is random now here's the first and most important tip i'm going to give you guys to do with the research if you guys don't like this random research that they've gotten labeled here then simply go ahead and find a new session before the research bar starts to fill up because as soon as a little tiny bit of green bar fills up on the research progress you guys will no longer be able to change the item that your staff are researching i will talk more about the research later on in the video however thirdly you guys have the option to add upgrades to your business just like the buy businesses and the crate warehouses and these three upgrades are pretty self-explanatory the equipment upgrade which is going to give you guys an overall higher price and then secondly you have the staff upgrade which is actually going to increase the speed of your staff research items and crate stock which i would definitely go ahead and buy because later in the video i am going to be breaking down how long it takes exactly to fill up both of these bars and straight away i can tell you it isn't quick whatsoever so definitely go ahead and get the staff upgrade and then finally you have the security upgrade now this is completely up to you whether you want to get this or not but once again it's exactly like the biker businesses and the crate warehouses where your business can get attacked by some npcs so by buying security it's going to reduce the likeliness of this happening but once again this is the only upgrade that isn't going to affect the price that you get for your product at the end or the time it takes to actually make your product or research any of the supplies now the final option you have on your laptop is to manage your staff and i've got to say this is a pretty good feature that rockstar games have added because you guys can decide what type of player you are are you the type of guy that's only looking to make money from your new bunker or you're also looking to unlock some new upgrades for your weapons or your cars and stuff and you guys like i said can completely decide what route you want to take at any given time or you can go ahead and do both at the same time so to be very clear both the stock level and the research progress are filled up by the same supply bar so you guys have to go into your laptop to decide which one you want either stock or supplies now like i said if you do both at the same time after one full supply bar runs out your bars should look exactly something like this so as you guys can see the research progress fills up a lot quicker than the stock level and bear in mind this is with all of the upgrades now before i break down how much time it takes exactly to fill up each of these bars depending whether you have it on assigned staff to manufacturing research or both i have fully tested all three of these and like i said in the intro it took me absolutely ages to do this so all i ask is to return the favor by dropping a like down below if you haven't done so already but before i break down the times it takes to fill up all of these bars one thing i will give you guys a tip on is make sure your supplies never actually run this low so try and keep an eye on it and before it reaches a quarter of the bar you're better off always going and resupplying it as you never want your bunker just to be sitting there ideal and stagnant you want your bunker to always be making money or always doing research for new unlocks for your character now the resupplies work exactly the same way the mc businesses work so you guys have the option to pay 75k to automatically just buy your supplies and restock them or you guys can do the better option and go ahead and steal them where you'll pay absolutely nothing so obviously if you guys are looking to make the most amount of money you guys want to go ahead and steal the supplies every single time now i'm not going to spend too much time on these resupply missions as they're pretty self-explanatory but i will give you guys a few quick tips and tricks when doing these resupply missions that could help you guys out in the long run firstly if you guys actually bought any of these new vehicles what i would suggest doing is just calling them out and trying them out for yourself so it's not a better way to test them out these vehicles especially if you guys are like me and you paid the full trade price for these vehicles you might as well get the most out of them and i'm not gonna lie some of them are pretty op if you guys haven't bought any of these new vehicles and you have no idea what they're all about i have done a full breakdown or a showcase on every single one of these vehicles so definitely be sure to go and check that playlist out down below if you guys haven't bought any of these vehicles and you're not sure which one is the best suited for you but the majority of these resupply missions can easily be done in like a karuma or a buzzard the best route i found when doing these resupply missions is just having two other associates so there's three of you all together because the majority of Time, they'll only give you two packages so the third player can always watch over the other two players that's personally what i prefer to do as you guys can see that's what we're currently doing in this gameplay right here so if you've got a buzzard an oppressor one of the new weaponized vehicles you can just drive slightly behind them just in case any online players want to come and attack them but to be honest with you it's very rare i've been in a ton of lobbies for the past three days and it's very very rare that you've seen players i think it's only like two and a half k if you destroy someone's supplies so everyone right now is more focused
focused on doing their own supply missions but as you guys can see right here two of my friends just drove past i stayed back just to take out the npcs the npcs ain't really a big deal anyway it's mainly the online players that you want to look out for but another trick is if you just want to delay these npcs from attacking your suppliers you don't even have to kill them because if the third player who's not carrying supplies is actually waiting behind the two suppliers the npcs will just stop and fully concentrate on you just literally making these resupply missions a walk in the park so as you guys can see here by completing a resupply mission with three of us in my organization all together it managed to fill up my supplies by about three fourths which is pretty decent so you guys are always much better grinding this out for a few decent players just to help things go much more quicker now at the end of the video i will explain how you guys can find a good group of players to put together to grind this method out but before i do so i just want to prove to you guys why it is better so take a note at my bars in the bottom right before i start this solo resupply run it's just under half full it is also worth mentioning from experience doing the solo resupply runs are a lot more easier than the ones with like two or three packages because obviously you guys need to rely on other players whereas the solo runs usually you have to just go and pick up like a tank or some heavy armored equipment which is really really hard to destroy anyway you really have to be shy at gta 5 online not to be able to do these solo supply runs but as you guys can see right here i got the one where all i had to do was go ahead and pick up a tank which is extremely easy to do now it is worth mentioning you can launch these resupply missions from your bunker if you're a ceo vip or biker so obviously each of these identities have their benefits and their perks but what i would suggest if you guys go ahead and do these resupply runs with four or less players i would always go as a vip rather than a biker because obviously you guys have the option to spawn a buzzard right in front of you instead of having to call it and go miles down the road and just having a buzzard on standby like that is such a major benefit to these resupply runs it's actually a joke so for the solo one as i mentioned all i had to do was go ahead and jack a tank now a lot of these times these missions are going to be set up as if like you have to do it a certain way like they'll park a cargo bob right next to the tank almost insinuating that you got to pick it up with the cargo bob fuck that shit it might be quicker to drive it across the map but it's much more easier to shoot down a cargo bob out of the air when you're going solo than it is a tank driving around the street so what i would do is always avoid those side vehicles that they try and give you in the mission another one is a technical aqua they try and give you for a mission that's based near the water leave that alone just go straight in the buzzard and i guarantee you guys will find these missions extremely easy as you guys can see there's virtually no enemies left around this tank i can literally just walk right in there i even got in a cargo bob for a few minutes if you guys didn't realize and i still didn't get shot by the police so it's very important to remember that these resupply missions are for guns and heavy artillery it's not really like the biker businesses where a lot of the times when you laced it with explosives you'd accidentally destroy the supplies themselves this very rarely happens during these resupply runs however as you guys can see once i complete the run i bring the tank back to my bunker you guys will see it does refill my supplies but not as much as when i had done the previous resupply with two other members so once once again the actual resupply mission itself may be a lot more easier but you guys will be getting less supplies every time you do it solo however fast forward a little bit on and as you guys can see my research tab has gone up dramatically however my stock has only gone up a tiny bit and that's because i have managed staff on both things at the same time now it is worth mentioning you can do something called fast track your research and what that'll basically do is unlock whatever you're researching at the time at that given moment now it isn't worth doing this at all as you guys can see i have a tiny little bar left and it's still trying to charge me 45k to fast track that shit so leave that alone boys honestly there is no point whatsoever rushing that shit especially with the trick that i mentioned to you guys earlier about finding a new session before the research actually starts so you guys are better off paying a fast track fee for something that you're actually going to use because don't forget once you unlock it you also have to equip it which is going to cost you guys another hundred grand so to put things into very clear perspective perspective for you guys it cost me 45k to fill up that little tiny bar to fast track of that if i want to fast track the entire thing that would cost me over 200k and then like i said another 150 odd k to apply the upgrade to my weapon or car so overall we're talking easily over 300k per upgrade which is just stupid so a major tip i'd give you guys is stay away from fast track 
making random shitty upgrades and only fast track the upgrades that you want and like i said if you dedicate all of your staff just to research it goes a lot quicker than just doing stock i will explain exactly how long it takes in just a second but as i mentioned you guys could easily do these resupply missions as an mc and have up to seven players in your mc at one given time so you could easily fill this all off at one given go but as you guys can see in the bottom right they actually gave us seven different supplies to pick up so it's much longer to rely on six other people to all get their supplies than it is with like three of you guys to pick up your supplies and when you're only going to be losing out on literally one eighth of the bar by doing it for only like three four of you overall you'll save much more time and effort so as you guys can see here three of us in my organization all i had to do was bait the cops while two of my friends went and collected only two of the packages rather than us having to get multiple packages and once again here you can see i only have two other players in my organization when i go to steal supplies it gives us two crates rather than three four five like i said when you've got multiple players in your organization and another tip i'm going to give you guys that hopefully will save you guys time because a lot of people are jumping on gta 5 in the last few days because obviously whenever a new dlc comes out a lot of all players just flood back to see what the dlc is saying so the servers do naturally play up a bit more so what you guys may be noticing is some of your friends may lag out mid resupply and this did actually end up happening to me a shitload for the last few days but i'm actually glad it did just so i can show you this little trick that i end up using when someone does lag out or they rage quit mid mission so as you guys can see there's four of us in our organization this is a pretty cool mission though. i'm not going to lie some of these resupply missions are pretty unique this one here takes us to this random super yacht that should be coming out in a future dlc but as you guys can see he has multiple layers to it looks very nice but i'm not here to talk about the design of the yacht but instead what you guys should do when this happens is so see it left so now we're in a predicament here we're on a yacht there's four packages to pick up but there's only three of us in the game what you guys are definitely 100 better off doing every single time in my personal experiences go ahead and destroy the package that the person who left was meant to pick up you guys can go ahead and pick up your package then go all the way back to the yacht to pick up the package that your friend was meant to pick up but think about it in that entire time that you go back and forth from your bunker to get one package for the equivalent of what it's worth in supplies you guys basically could have just destroyed it went back to your bunker and stole more supplies that would have been worth more in the long run because so i've seen a ton of guys lag out of games and then the guys spent near enough 25 minutes on one resupply mission where he's just gone back and forth getting the parcels from people who lagged out of his game when you're actually better off just doing what i do on screen here find the parcel that he was meant to get throw down a sticky bomb or two and simply just destroy it don't bother wasting your time going back and forth honestly this will save you guys a major amount of time in the long run and like i mentioned right at the start of the video as long as you guys make sure you have supplies and never run to the bottom even if we destroy one of the parcels three are still good enough to fill my supply bars all the way up to the top as you guys can see so like i said i would have wasted a shitload of time going back for a package that would have made no difference to me whatsoever now one major suggestion that i'm going to give you guys is to pick another business in gta 5 online whether this be the vehicle warehouse the crate warehouse one of your biker businesses or even some free roam work choose one of these options and what you want to do is go ahead and do one of these once you finish the resupply run so whilst your staff are getting busy either researching new upgrades or making new stock you guys can still be bringing in money now in my case i actually own every other business in gta 5 online i have a cocaine factory plus i have a vehicle warehouse and i have a crate warehouse i actually have two crate warehouses so i can do them simultaneously with no cooldown period so what i will say to you guys is it's completely up to you what style of work you guys do want to grind out while your supplies get converted into stock or research now i have already done a full guide on all three of these different businesses the vehicle warehouse the crate warehouse and all the biker businesses so if you guys own one of these three different type of businesses i will leave a link to all three of those guides down below in the description i do show you how to make the most amount of money out of each of these individual methods so as you guys can see fast forward only two minutes into the final sale and it's practically done there you go in under three minutes i've made half a million from one of my crate warehouses is now what i decided to do because i was in an empty session i didn't need to cover my other friends i went straight over to my vehicle warehouse and then i go ahead and sell a collection from my vehicle warehouse but like i said if you guys want to know how to make the most out of these businesses i've done them in a separate guide so i'm not going to cover that in this video but what i'm letting you guys know in this video is that what you should try and do is try and do all of these sales whilst your bunker is resupplying so fast forward in this gameplay once we sell the collection that's another 200k in my bank as easy as that whilst 
my bunker is still resupplying so it is worth noting your bunker will continually use up your supplies no matter what work you're doing in free roam but that is hands down the best way to combine it with other businesses to make the most amount of money but some of you guys may not own any of these other businesses and you've just bought a bunker so you're thinking how is the best way to kill time to resupply without getting kicked from the game of course the old school method of tying an elastic band around your control pad is no longer any good because your control will simply just run out of batteries and then you'll get kicked after 10 minutes so if you guys do want to do the afk method and just leave your control pad there you can go out go have something to eat go crack a shit go watch one of my other youtube videos all you have to do is simply go into the security cams in your bunker and then bang you guys will never get kicked from this game even once your control pad dies you can leave it there for hours on end and it will not kick you from the game i actually fully tested this out as you guys can see when i came back it said please reconnect your controller simply plugged it back in bang backed out the cameras as you guys can see my stock has gone up majorly my supplies have gone down and i'm still not kicked from the game so easily a good method to use especially during the summer if you guys live in england we don't really get that much sun so you guys might be playing gta 5 one day you see the sun pop out of the clouds you're like fuck it watch my security cams for a few hours come back and you've made money now some of you guys might be thinking wait laser i haven't actually bought the security upgrade for my bunker so how can i not get kicked from the game well if that's the case simply just head over to any of your own departments and simply go over to the couch and watch the tv on the couch and that will work equally as good you guys will not be getting kicked from the game and once again i fully tested this method out came back it said for me to reconnect my controller and bang i was still in the game okay so now it's time to break down exactly how long each thing takes to fill up i know a lot of you guys are very confused about this and i'm not surprised why rockstar games never give us any information to do with this stuff we have to literally go out there and test it for ourselves and this is literally taking me ages to do so basically our bunker is made up of a hundred units each unit individually is worth 7k so altogether if you've got a bunker full of a hundred units it will sell for 700k in the same county just like the biker businesses you will get a bonus for selling it in the opposite county in this case los santos but i will talk more about the final sale in just a second so if you guys have your staff on shared both manufacturing and research each unit each 7k unit will take around 841 seconds to fill up which means to get a full bunker full of 100 units to sell that's going to take around 25 hours to fill if you've got it on shared manufacturing and research and of course by doing it this way this also gives us research as well and as i did mention at the start of the video each project costs around 225k to fast track right from the start but if you want to do it naturally through this way the progress bar would increase every 421 seconds so therefore the research project usually finishes around six to six and a half hours after and it is also worth mentioning on average what your actual supplies will go down when you've got it on shared manufacturing and research from what i noticed it goes down one unit around every 115 seconds seconds so that means all of your supplies should be depleted after about three and a half hours it is worth mentioning this won't affect the final sale price but instead it will affect the production time so to fill up one unit will now take you guys 421 seconds and the supplies will decrease every 84 seconds therefore your supplies usually run out after about two and a half hours and by putting it on manufacturing only it will take about 12 hours to get a full 100 units stocked up to sell for over a million dollars now if you guys just want to get about money for the moment and you want to do research only the progress bar will tick up every 210 seconds and uses the supplies at the same rate although it might not happen at the exact same time so your research won't go up at the exact same time that your supplies go down but they do simultaneously work at the same time hand in hand therefore you should be able to unlock a research upgrade after about six hours which is around the same as the shared method which is extremely important i know for a fact a lot of you guys wouldn't have thought this naturally i didn't think this as well but after timing it and testing it all out this is 100% the case so there we go a breakdown of all of the times it takes to refill both research and supplies and your stock depending on all the different factors you have with your staff now of course once you guys have got your bunker full of supplies aka guns and ammunition now you're ready to make the final sale now before I break down the bonuses that you guys can earn from making the final sale which can add up to be a shitload I'm going to firstly show you guys how to not lose your product when making the final sale so as i'm sure you guys are all aware 
all of these work mc businesses vehicle warehouses they all have to be done in a public free roam session of course there's been tons of different ways to get empty solo public sessions me currently i have a method that i'm working on right now which is working about 70 to 80 percent of the time but i want to make sure it works on ps4 also before i upload it so do stay tuned for that video dropping definitely in the next 48 hours or two days however as you guys just saw on screen when i went to make my final sale on the laptop i could sell for 700k in the same county which would be less than a mile drive or i can get a 1.5 multiplier and sell in los santos which i'm much better off doing to earn an extra 300k with more risk though now one thing i will say is i've done this final mission a good few times now and, and every single time it's been one of these turreted insurgents so i'm pretty sure this is the final sale mission every single time i could be wrong because like i said i've only done this final sale mission about four or five times and it's been this one every single time so unless that is just mad coincidence i don't think there is a different style of final sale mission so as i just mentioned everyone out there now on gta 5 online thinks that you need an empty public session however what i'm going to prove to you guys is that you're probably better off not even doing the empty public session route i press down on my d-pad very quickly just to show you guys that currently i'm in an empty public session however this does end up filling up very quickly but that wasn't the problem another issue you might face is what i showed you guys earlier the servers might play up and one of your friends might end up lagging out now what that will actually do is make this mission 10 times longer because you have to make five individual sales with your insurgent and of course any player can only drive one car at any given time so we've got three insurgents there's three of us in the organization one of us lag out then we've got to go make the delivery and then go all the way back to his insurgent and make all the deliveries again in his insurgent even though we get half an hour to do this mission it's just really long and not worth the stress that it's going to cause especially if random players are joining our session and they just see some random supplies sitting at the side of the road unprotected it's just a sitting target for them they're going to go over and destroy it very very quickly i will show you guys the quick method i use when completing this final mission once i've shown you guys how to actually save your product so as you guys can see right here a bunch of people started joining like i said you can get a solo public session but that's not going to really stop people from joining your game it may give you guys a big advantage but what i'm about to show you guys is going to give you guys an even bigger advantage so as you guys can see on screen everything's going good we'll move on to the second drop off i'm already counting that million in my head and spending it and then bang my associate gets lagged out right here i'm stuck in a predicament we've only made one sale we've only got two drivers yet we've got three insurgents to deliver so if we move on to the next location we're gonna have to leave that insurgent ideal at the side of a motorway which i don't want to take the risk of it being destroyed so quickly within 50 seconds of that happening either your associate leaving or your product getting destroyed you simply want to dashboard quit the game or unplug your console in my case i just dashboarded press start and then quick application and as you guys can see on screen i'm restarting the game now it is worth mentioning you're not going to keep your entirety of your product you are going to lose one little tiny bar which in equivalent is worth about 20 to 30k i believe which is nothing compared to losing the entire product so hopefully that method right there is going to save all of you guys from a major headache if one of your friends lag out of a game or out of nowhere you got tons of players online trying to shoot you down in jets and tanks it's not really even worth the stress so whilst earlier on in the video i said maybe being a vip or ceo is the best to resupply in my personal opinion you're much better off being an mc with making a final sale because an mc can have up to seven members the more the better because like i said if someone lags out then someone else can come and jump in his vehicle or if people are trying to destroy you then maybe a team can try and back you rather than doing the dashboard method so in my case right here i made sure i had a minimum of four as i knew they'd definitely give us three vehicles to deliver so by me making sure i have four players if one of us lag out or die another player is there ready to get into his car so i actually had five members this time when i made the run just to be extra secure and i suggest you guys do the same now i did mention by accident a few minutes ago that all of these final sale missions are in a turret insurgent that isn't actually the case because i remember doing a mission we did get three vehicles but there was three monster trucks so i think the three vehicles you will get will be random but as i did mention it turns out it was just coincidence that four out of the five times i done it we got the turret insurgent so as you guys can see on screen right now i had about five six members with me in this gameplay so what you should definitely do if you get the turret insurgents is get two of you per vehicle but as i did mention earlier on the vehicle one of my crew members came in a heli because he knew straight away if you've got someone in a heli in the sky covering you just gives you guys a much bigger advantage
advantage. Now it is definitely worth mentioning that not all of these final cell missions are exactly the same. Some are much, much more easier than others. In the previous attempt where my friend got lagged out, we had to take three insurgents to five different drop-offs and in between every drop-off, we actually have to kill a certain amount of Meriwether guards. So it's dragged on for quite a bit. So it only made sense that I dashboarded in that previous attempt. And if you guys noticed, those missions which are slightly harder, they actually gave us half an hour. Whereas these ones right here, the easier set of missions are only 15 minutes. That's because all this one is, is just a delivery mission. As soon as we arrive at the spot, that is it, done. And the best thing is, we don't even get any NPCs chasing us down. All we have to worry about is online players. So just to be safe, what I would do, the guy who's on the turret, I'd pull up my interaction menu, I ever go down to snacks or body armor and just hover over one of these things. So as you're getting shot, you can just replenish your armor or your health very, very quickly, almost giving you guys a mini god mode. So overall, the final cell missions from these bunker businesses compared to the MC businesses or the crates are much more easier, even easier than the vehicle warehouses. Even though the vehicle warehouses, you just deliver in a car, sometimes those NPCs can be fucking annoying to build enough that damage cost against you. However, as you guys can see on screen, fast forward after about five minutes or so and bang delivered mission complete a bunker sold over 1 million dollars in my account i actually got 1 million 116k instead of 1 million and 50k so i actually received an extra 66k just because there were some random online players in my lobby when i made the sale don't forget you guys will get a bonus for every player in your game when you make the final sale and as you guys can see on screen right now i went ahead and made another final sale and this is the time i actually got the marshals or the monster truck and these aren't weaponized so if you guys do end up getting these monster trucks definitely have another guy who's in a heli or maybe a tampa or another car like i said i've done a full breakdown of all of the new weaponized vehicles if you guys do want to see what they're all about i will leave a link to the full gun running playlist down below in the description however fast forward this gameplay on a bit and as you guys can see we had this low life in our lobby called raise flux x feel free to go and report this sad low life he literally sat in our lobby for about eight hours straight just trying to kill us got to the point where we didn't even want to kick the guy because he was just so goddamn bad at the game here he is in a heli trying to shoot down my friend in a monster truck and of course at this point i wasn't really worrying because i knew i had about 50 seconds even if he did destroy it to quickly dashboard and i wouldn't lose any of my product but just look how bad this kid is he crashes his heli and then he jumps out of it and gets put to sleep as easy as that so always pay attention to the players around you in free roam because it is more than likely you're going to get one of those sad low lives trying to be brave and coming to destroy you however fast forward in this gameplay on a and as you guys can see, $1,113,000 in my bank account from the final sale. And that is, once again, like I said, because I had players in my game. So you're always better off taking that risk, selling in a public session. And if you do get destroyed, just dashboard very quickly. And nonetheless, that is going to do it for me, guys. The ultimate gun running bunker money making guide. Hopefully, you guys do appreciate me putting this video together for you guys. It has literally taken me about three, four days. Some days I've spent over 14 hours alone on this video. So all I ask is return the favor by dropping a like down below you can probably tell by my voice it is literally on its last strings as i speak to you however as i also mentioned earlier if you guys maybe don't have that many friends that play gta 5 online you need to put together a good little group of you guys to grind this out with be sure to leave a comment down below if your gamer tag or your psn and you might be better off leaving whether or not you got a mic because i know certain players only prefer to play with other guys who've got mics or if you guys do prefer i will be kicking some inactive players from my gta 5 crews i currently have three different crews laser gaming x1 laser gaming ps4 and laser gaming pc so if the crews are full by the time you're watching this video check back in a few hours after this video has gone live and there should be some space in the crews and i will leave a link to all three of those down low in the description nonetheless that's gonna do it for me guys thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in my next video Peace.